Boeing's MAX has been grounded for nearly a year now, and it looks like it's going to be a whole lot longer. Let's talk about it next on Maximus. Today's story involves Boeing's discovery of a wiring problem they missed during the manufacture of the 737 MAX that could cause the rewiring of not only 800 MAX jets, but over 6,000 737s worldwide. Yeah, that's a big deal. Here's the story. During the original design and certification process of Boeing 737 MAX, Company engineers didn't notice that the electrical wiring didn't meet FAA regulations for safe wire separation. The bigger problem? The FAA missed it too. The wiring miscalculation creates the potential for an electric short to activate the jet's horizontal stabilizer with no input by the pilot, which of course could be catastrophic, bringing down even more planes, killing more innocent people, and frankly, the death of Boeing Corporation itself. The FAA faces a dilemma over what to do about it. Plus, the issue has complicated the return of the MAX to service after a grounding that is extending into an entire year and surely beyond. Modifying the wiring would be messy and expensive, but allowing the wiring to remain as is is not an option, especially at a time when both Boeing and the FAA are under tremendous scrutiny. Boeing is pointing to the long service history of the earlier Model 737, which has the same wiring. However, that earlier 737NG model didn't have to meet the current wiring separation standards because they came into force long after the jet was certified. There are 205 million flight hours on the 737 fleet with this wiring type. However, Boeing said they've had no hot shorts reported in that time. In addition, Boeing says pulling out and rerouting wires on the almost 800 MAXs already built would pose a potentially higher risk of causing an electrical short because insulation could chafe or crack in the process of moving the wires. But an FAA safety engineer familiar with the issue, who asked not to be identified, said agency technical staff have been clear and told Boeing they will have to fix this issue. He went on to say that the FAA faces political and public backlash even at the appearance of giving Boeing a break on a regulation that's there for a reason. Furthermore, there's also pressure from the foreign regulators, including the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, or the EASA. And it's also a short bet that if Boeing proposes to do nothing, the EASA is going to say hell no to clearing the MAX to fly over their skies. Whatever decision it ultimately makes, he said, the FAA better have a strong case. Recently, the FAA issued an official statement hinting that Boeing may be forced to comply with the wiring regulation. We will rigorously evaluate Boeing's solution to the wiring issue with the 737 MAX, the FAA said. Boeing must demonstrate compliance with all certification standards. That said, Boeing insists that whatever decision the FAA makes, it will not change the company's estimate for returning the MAX to service by the middle of this year. Boeing discovered the wiring vulnerabilities and informed the FAA only after the deadly MAX crashes. It is unclear, however, how during the design of the MAX, Boeing missed the fact that the wiring didn't meet regulation governing separation of wires to prevent shorts. The regulation was introduced in 2009, following two fatal crashes, TWA 800 in 1996, in which an electrical short is believed to have caused a spark in the fuel tank with a resulting explosion, and Swiss Air 111 in 1998, when an electrical short caused a fire in the cockpit. An FAA safety engineer said Boeing identified about a dozen positions in the 737 wiring, including one towards the jet's tail, and the rest in the electronics bay under the forward fuselage where significant runs of wire failed to meet the new separation standard. The wire lengths involved were as long as 16 feet, he said. In one instance, engineers found a hot power wire that was too close to two command wires running the jet's horizontal stabilizer, one for commanding the tail to swivel and move the nose up, the other to move it down. The danger is a short that causes arcing of electricity from the hot wire to the command wire. If a short occurs between the power wire and either the up or down command wire, the stabilizer can go to the full nose up or full nose down position, the engineer said. Furthermore, the electrical power in the wire 
wire could circumvent the cutoff switches in the cockpit that in the event of such a stabilizer runaway are used to kill electrical power to the tail. Theoretically, the pilots could be unable to turn it off. Boeing engineers described this as a semi-remote possibility. Boeing's position, based on the 205 million safe flight hours of the earlier 737, where this has never happened, is that this is extremely remote. However, the danger has now been scientifically established. If Boeing had asked the FAA in 2017 for a pass on this wiring separation requirement, on the basis of the safe flight history of the earlier model, it would almost certainly have been granted an exception. However, Boeing didn't ask for it then, because somehow, it missed the problem entirely. Although the safety system analysis was delegated to Boeing, this also exposes the failure of FAA oversight. So how did this go undetected for so long? The FAA bears as much of the blame as Boeing. The decision on what to do now should come down to identifying the level of risk. If they identify that the failure risk is not that great, not catastrophic, and the failure probability is low, they could potentially justify maintaining the system as is, he said. I believe that's something both sides would agree to. The FAA safety engineer said the agency will have to do a transport airplane risk assessment methodology to determine what type of fix is required and how soon. Moreover, since the wiring is the same on the earlier 737NG model, the question arises whether any wiring modification might also be needed on those aircraft of which there are more than 6,000 flying worldwide. However, the unidentified FAA source said a risk assessment is unlikely to recommend any change to the wiring on the NG. You run a greater risk of introducing a short on older airplanes by going in and messing with it, he said. We even have people within the FAA concerned about breaking apart the wiring on the new Maxes. The FAA said discovering the wiring vulnerability so late and after two crashes makes it a harder call than if Boeing had asked for an exception during the jet's original certification. They realize only now they have a problem with the wiring and they want forgiveness? It's going to have to be well documented and justified. So there you have it. Boeing, a once proud and founding father of the airline manufacturing industry, finds itself in 2020 struggling to regain the trust of a once trusting flying public. However, there isn't much sympathy for Boeing to be found these days. With all the revelations that have come to light in the wake of the MCAS tragedies, Boeing has no one to blame but themselves. No, an act of God or a genuine accident didn't put Boeing in this particular mess. Boeing did. And frankly, if you ask me, what Boeing did was criminal and executives need to go to jail. So now with this wiring issue, Boeing can't play the victim card because their past sins have indeed caught up to them. We've looked behind the curtain and we've seen Boeing is no longer the proud standard bearer it once was. If Boeing were a cat, it would have very few of its nine lives left. Because one more crash and there may be no more Boeing left to mourn. And as a proud American, that makes me sad. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me and remember to leave comments down below, also suggestions, and always ring the bell, like, share, subscribe, and until next time, this is Maximus.